couple of cases of shots light, they turned out to be flat. Not them, Pete, the beer. Kind of like the Reds, they lose 8-4. Not that Fernando Vina didn't try to alter that. First, he is going to be gunned out at home by Reggie Sanders on a shallow single. What's he thinking? Then, on a ball that goes over Dimitri Young's head, he will try to overplay his hand once more. And once more, he is dead meat at the old hot corner. So the score could have been really big because they got to Rick Cribbed in a big way after Mike Remlinger left. Jason Bure on in the seventh. Man on, and Bobby Hughes goes deep into the night. That made it 8 1. Reds scuffle up to three in the eighth to make it for the 8 4 final. George, that the Reds can beat, but they're usually not the good team. Right. They're, 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 they're not the Atlantis the and the San Diego. That was putting you know, it delicately. If, if only they weren't in the league. Atlanta and <laughs> San Diego, they may have a chance. So far this season, the Reds could be considered brewmasters going into tonight. The Reds have beaten the Brewers four out of six games, but prosperity is one thing. This Reds team doesn't seem to handle very well. First inning tonight, the Brew Crew. Looking to cash in. Reggie Sanders charging. He comes up firing. Fernando Vina, what in the world were you thinking? You're out by a mile. But Vina came back and got four hits and really burned the Reds as it turned out. Mike Remlinger was throwing well until he gave up three in the fifth and then this in the sixth. Jeremy Burnett's a home run. Later in the sixth. Oh my goodness. This one's deep. Doesn't get out. It's a double. Scores another run. Milwaukee three in the sixth, two more in the seventh. They beat the Reds eight to four. Sean Casey got off to a slow start, but he's showing some pop these days. In the first inning today at Milwaukee, Casey at the bat. He sends it deep to right field. The outfielder gives up on it, and he should. It's way gone. Home run number three for Sean. The Reds have a one to nothing lead. The Reds break it open in the fourth. It's Casey again, this time to the gap in left center. That drives home Reggie Sanders. The Reds score six times in the fourth inning. Pete Harnish gets his ninth win of the season. Reds eight, Brewers two. Window on the mound tonight, and the kid was mowing him down. Dennis Reyes had the Pirates swinging at air. I mean, they were whiffing at everything. He's got this guy looking real bad. He had 12 strikeouts in just six innings. Reyes allowed three runs, so the Reds were down five to three in the ninth. Dimitri Young singles. Reggie Sanders scores. It's a one-run game. Then Jeffrey Hammond follows that with, eh, it's not impressive, but it's going to fall in. Barry Larkin scores. It is tied at five. But in the bottom of the ninth, the Reds are in trouble. The Pirates with men at first and third, one out. The outfield's playing in, and it goes over them. Manny Martinez drives in the game winner. The Reds fall six to five. They are now two games behind the Pirates in last place. The Dodgers want to make a decision by mid-September. Bowden is one of the top two candidates, along with Dave Dombrowski of the Marlins. As for the club in Pittsburgh, Things getting very ugly. Bucks up 2-0 at this point. Second inning, pitcher Chris Peters puts down the perfect sack bunt. Scores Freddie Garcia, 3-0 Pirates. The dust had hardly settled when Tony Womack slashes one up the middle. Tally now, 4-0 Pittsburgh. There's more. You want to see a bullet? The proverbial rope right there. Al Martin, two-run job. Bingo. Brett Tomko not having fun. He goes two and two thirds, allows six Ernie's and seven hits on three walks. Rob Kribda came along, fifth inning. Jason Kendall takes him deep. Two run job, 13 1 Pirates at that point. Pirates win 4 2. Out hit him 17 to 7. Yeah, I know the feeling. Wake me when it's over. Taking on the Pirates. Pirates have won four in a row. Lead off man Tony Womack. You know he leads the league in stolen bases. Next hitter is Adrian Brown. He's singles. Got his first RBI of the year. Then here comes Jason Kendall. He's fifth in the league in batting and had a home run is number 11. That would put him 41 behind McGuire. Long year for Jack McKee and team. They're 20 and a half back. The rest of the Pirates lineup. Kevin Young, 91st RBI. That's a career high. Turner Ward doubles. He's the only starter not to score a run, excluding the pitcher. Al Martin, 12th home run. Bill, did you know that Al's Uncle Rod played 12 seasons in the NFL for the Raiders? I did not. Jack McKeon's uncle did not apparently play for the Raiders. Freddie Garcia, 15 of 31 since being recalled. Luke Collier, base not. You get the idea the Pirates did everything right in this game. Oh, come on and squeeze me. Squeeze me like you do. And they'll get the How about that? The suicide squeeze from Chris Peters, the starting pitcher, and the Pirates won that thing easily. I thought I saw Omar Moreno actually get a hit in that highlight. 14-2, the final. Bucks with the Expos, and they got a great game from starter Steve Paris, who was firing blanks all night long. At the plate, Brett Boone gave Paris all the runs he would need, slapping a single into left. 
That would plate Reggie Sanders and Barry Larkin in the first. The Reds go on to build a four-zip lead. As for Paris, he fires a complete game shutout with four strikeouts to even his record at three and three. Paris set down the last 17 Expos in a row. The Reds win it four to nothing. Meanwhile, Reds general manager Jim Bowden is apparently on a list of candidates for the Dodgers GM job. The Reds publicly announced that the Dodgers could talk to Bowden, and it's being reported he's already been flown to L.A. and been interviewed already. Right now, Tommy Lasorda is the interim GM and says other applicants are being looked at along. Vladimir Guerrero, another star is born, but on this day he was handled by the Reds. He was 0 for 4. The Expos could muster only four hits. Like it with the big lead. Jason Bure got the start and pitched well. Meanwhile, Sean Casey doubled, single, and since the game is in Montreal, it's a quick three runs. Casey, his fourth of the year, Reds lead at seven nothing. He flied out on his attempt to get the cycle, but the Reds uh, touched down and then three rouges beat the Expos 10 0. Very nice restart for Jason Bray. Starting all over in Cincinnati with help from Don Gullard. He's got his delivery straightened out. His fastball, particularly inside, was outstanding, just as it was in his first couple of years with the White Sox. Run in three games in the series. The Reds outscore Montreal 22 to 1. Pete Harnish on the mound and Barry Larkin at shortstop and looking good. That helps the cause. Great play by Larkin. The Reds were going for three straight shutouts for the first time since 63 on the offensive side. Reggie Sanders deep to right, way out of there, his 13th. The Reds score eight runs. Harnish can't get the shutout, but he's in for the final out, which is an adventure, but it stays in the park. Eight to one Reds. Harnish gets win number 10. The Reds sweep three in Montreal for the Bounce back in Cincy. Well, would it rain in Sammy's parade? Would it rain on anybody's parade? You'll see here, Sammy would not provide the home run that the fans wanted, but he provided a single, which is just fine for him and the Cubs right here because it scores Lance Johnson at the top of the first, one nothing Cubs. Now down 2-1 to the Cubs, top of the third. Sosa's second at bat with two on, takes Dennis Reyes down the left field line. Johnson and Mark Grace come on down. Tight Cubs take a 3-2 lead on Sosa's 128th and 129th. RBIs of the season, but they trail 8-7 to the Cubs in the top of the seventh. Newest Cub, Gary Gaetti facing John Hudek with a man on, and Gaetti got it. Hit pretty good. To Reggie Sanders makes a yeoman effort and right, but it just, just goes over his glove. Two-run shot for Gaetti is 12th. Cubs take a 9-8 lead, but we're tied at nine in the bottom of the seventh. Still too early for Rod Beck. Terry Mulholland walks Jeffrey Hammonds with the bases loaded, and that's your go-ahead run. 10-9 Reds is your score. Top of the ninth, Sammy Sosa, the tying run against Gabe White, swinging. And the Reds go on to win 10-9. Sosa and the Cubs bumming. The Reds win 10-9. About his confrontation with Sosa, Gabe White said, I made up my mind I was going to go at him hard. If he was going to beat me, he was going to beat me with my best stuff. As for Sosa, he said, I was just looking for a good pitch to hit. I know I'm not going to hit a home run every time. The Cubs have dropped four in a row and remain a game behind the Mets in the one. Play the role of stopper. Sammy Sosa facing Brett Tomko, who had struck him out in his all of his previous four appearances, but not this time. Number 52 goes 434 feet. Yeah, it was high, not low. Cubs go up four to one. Royal or Wood just abusing the Reds all day long. Meanwhile, and Sammy enjoys it. Reggie Sanders, the leadoff man for the Reds, strikes out on the fastball there. He fanned three times. Barry Larkin, second in the order on the high hard one. He did get one of the three Reds hits off Woods. Third in the lineup, Sean Casey, struck out twice by Wood. That brings up cleanup man Dimitri Young, who also strikes out on the high hard one. He fanned once in the game. Eddie Tobbins, he the next victim. He goes down twice on the day. Brett Boone, no success here. Wood got him all three times he saw him. Roberto Pettigine, the seventh hitter, swinging. The eighth hitter in the lineup, Aaron Boone. On a full count pitch, Wood gets him with the breaking ball. Boone did homer off him in the second inning. We give him credit for that. The only red in the starting lineup not to strike out was Tomko. And he only came up once. Kerry Wood with 16 strikeouts in eight innings. He gives up just three hits and three walks. The Cubs win at 9-2. to two. Wood now with 223 strikeouts. Just Cincinnati and gave the fans a look at home run number 52. Sammy says it helps that he and the Cubs are tangled in the race for a playoff spot.
I'm not thinking about the home run, what I'm doing right now. I'm just thinking about go out there and do my job and play every day. And, and, and that's why probably that's why I've I just been doing what I've been doing because I'm not thinking about the home run. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not thinking about nothing. Just go out there and play great. That's what Sammy did today. It was the top of the third inning when Sammy gives it a whack. That baby goes all the way to the facing of the club level, a monster shot estimated at 438 feet. But Sammy says he didn't see how far his blast traveled. I never look um, um, every time I hit a home bone. I'm gonna wait, do what I need to do and run the base. Oh, really? uh, oh yeah. Um, I have a lot of respect for the other team and, and for the people in, in the stand and, and because everybody watching. And, and you know, I don't want to um, go at them trying to show up nobody. This is not me. The Reds were able to celebrate a slugger of their own. This is Aaron Boone putting a charge in the one. Deep to center field, the first home run of Boone's career. Actually, I didn't, wasn't sure if it was going out or not. I just was hoping it would get over his head. And uh, fortunately, it carried out of the ballpark. And, uh, and it, you know, that was a big thrill. But powerful bats weren't the only story today. How about the powerful arm of Kerry Wood? Look at him, mow him down. The Cubs break the Reds' four-game winning streak with a 9-2 win. Wood racks up 16 strikeouts. He was he was on his game. What did he strike out? 15 or 16? 16. 16. He was on his game. Hopefully that we can continue to put a few young players in there next year and also maybe make maybe an addition or two of a veteran here that would, you know, really stabilize our ball club. And our goal next year is to try to improve uh, and go upwards in the standings. Jack was all jacked up for tonight's game against the Marlins. Bottom of the second base is loaded. Sean Casey finds a big old hole out there. Three runs score. Casey ties his career high with five RBI in the game. Brett Boone, he had a big night too. He yanks this one to left center. There goes Brett's 14th home run of the season. Reds are up five to three. Then Barry Larkin. Home run number 13 on the season. He's now tied with Rosen Morgan for 10th on the Reds all time homer list. Then it gets out of hand. Time to catch up on the reading. Boone again. Two men aboard, his second tater of the night, 15th of the season. The Reds roll 12 to three. They've won all six of their games against the Marlins this season. It was a big night for a lot of guys. Yeah, I feel good up there, but like I said, I, I'm looking to you know, try and stay on even keel, so tomorrow I'll go out and uh, you know, try and do it again. Came back, finished strong, and uh, it's a great game for our team this, this game. You know, everybody, everybody chipped in. There's a lot of good things are happening around us right now. You know, Jack signed his extension, and you know, hopefully everything will be settled as far as that's concerned. Baseball's Hall of Fame has kept the doors closed to Tony Perez, but the Reds' Hall of Fame gladly welcomes the Big Red Machine's main RBI man, along with outfielder Cy Seymour, who played here in the early 1900s. Let's go to Synergy Field, where Perez was honored tonight before the Reds met the Marlins. Perez played 16 seasons here and ranked 16th in Major League history with more than 1,650 RBI. I want to get to my flat. I don't have no words to say how I feel tonight, but I feel great. Yeah, one of a kind, Mr. Perez. The Reds are loving this four-game weekend series against the Marlins, beating Florida 10-8 to tonight. A little bit of rain, but nothing special. The Reds have now scored 22 runs in two wins. Let's go back to Synergy Field. Score tied one apiece. Dimitri Young singles home Barry Larkin and Jeffrey Hammonds. The Reds lead it 3-1 to one tonight. Then in the third, Tony's son, Eduardo Perez, doubles home two more, but Perez later left the game with an undisclosed injury. And Brett Boone bashes his third homer in two games, number 16 this season for Boone. Scott Sullivan gets the win as the Reds beat the Marlins. Aaron Boone slaps one of his two hits on the night into left field. His big brother Brett trots on home. That increases the lead to three. The Marlins would sneak a five spot on the board to take a brief lead, but in the seventh, Reggie Sanders loops a shot into the left field corner for a double. Two runs would cross the plate, and we're all tied at five all. Later in the same inning, Barry Larkin shoots some rope into the gap for his third hit of the night. Reggie Sanders scores as Larkin gets his league, leading 10th triple of the year. The Reds beat the Marlins 7-5 and stay perfect 8-0 against them this year. Team in the modern era, and that's a perfect 9-0 record over the Marlins this year for a complete season sweep. During the game, Reds announcers Marty Brenneman and Joe Nuxo were warming up their pipes as they will sing Take Me Out to the Ball Game tomorrow night at Wrigley Field. Meanwhile, catcher Eddie Tobinsey was swinging his own pipe in the fifth. Eddie clubs a three-run homer. 
his 10th this year to put the Reds back out in front, 8-5. to five. One inning later, Barry Larkin continues his hot hitting, air mailing his 14th tater of the year over the wall and left. Larkin, he goes two for four with a pair of RBIs. The Reds now lead it nine to six. But the hottest red of all is Brett Boone. In the eighth, Boone cranks out his 17th homer and extends his hitting streak to 13 games, both career highs. Boone goes seven for 15 in the series with four homers and 13 RBIs. The Reds win 14 to seven and send the Marlins to their 90th loss the most ever for a defending world champion team. There first, it has international implications, facing Brett Tomko in the third. That's out of here, folks. At Sammy's 55th, moving him within one of Hack Wilson's club and National League record set in 1930, tying him with McGuire. It set the left field bleachers into delirium. Then there's delirious. Dimitri Young, whose three-run homer earlier gave the Reds the lead, gave it all back with two misplays in left field to keep the inning alive. Whereupon pitcher Kerry Wood would follow with his second home run of the year to ice it for the Cubs, but oh, there was more. The aforementioned melodic renderings of Messrs. Nuxall and Brenneman. Well, it's one, two, three strikes around at the old ball game. Mm, two of the best sports in the business honoring the late Harry Carey. Eddie, wind blowing in, didn't matter. Four zip, semi second at bat. You got my daddy. Two-run homer. Number 55 ties McGuire. 14th straight series is homer. Cubs down four to take another look. Sosa with that patented traditional homer hop. He gets started. 30 homers at Wrigley this year. Said Brett Tomko, who served it up. I don't think anybody is hotter than Sammy Sosa, including McGuire. 4-2 Reds, bottom four. Gary Gaetti lines left. Dimitri Young. Oh. He had a nice bat, two for four in the day, but a soft glove. He said, my bat is ninth error of the year. Next batter, Kerry Wood, the pitcher pulling out his fat wood. Second career homer, only 59 behind Roger Maris. Cubs up 5-4. In the dugout, Sosa grabbed Wood, said, take a curtain call. Wood said later, I wouldn't want a pitcher to take a curtain call if I was in his park, and he had a homer off me. Wood bigged up on the mound, 10 Ks in six innings. Cubs win the game 5-4. You saw Wood, he wouldn't come out for that curtain call, so Sosa jumped out of the dugout and took Wood's curtain call. Said, Kerry, he's been taking them all year, what's one more? Bottom of the first, here's Sammy Wrigley hitting with a man on. Two strikes, one out. Steve Paris is the pitcher for the Reds and gets them swinging. And then Eddie Taubins, he fires a second, getting Lance Johnson stealing your old strike him out, throw him out, double play. 4-1 on the sixth, Sammy struggling. There's your first pitch, it's ball one. Second pitch, takes a fastball in the outside corner for a strike. Third pitch, swing and a miss. Fourth pitch, swing and a miss. Sosa would go 0 for 3. Still in the sixth inning. Runners on second and third, two down. Brant Brown steps to the plate. And Brown rips one through the hole. Lance Johnson and Mickey Morandini scores. The Cubs are only down a run, 4-3. to three. Remember, the Cubs are in a race, unlike the Cardinals. 4-4 four, four in the eighth. Sosa facing Gabe White. And Sammy late again on the fastball, trying to catch up to it. And Sosa would show some frustration in the dugout. The next batter, Mark Grace. How about Grace picking him up? Picking him up the other way. Solo shot is 14th. And the Cubs go on to win a very important ball game for them, 6-5. to five. Again, Sosa goes 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Rod Beck gets three hits for his 41st save. Cubs pull a half game ahead of the Mets. Another Jack 56, but him one behind McGuire for a while. Sammy stands crowd in the bleachers and won another one. And here we go. Sixth inning, Jason Bure, fastball away, Gonski. 56. Nice catch in the bleachers, by the way. Broke up a scoreless game. But then, as we soak it up with Sammy, the Reds came back at him. Eighth inning, Dimitri Young from the right side going with it to the alley. Good enough to score Eddie Tobinzi and Barry Larkin. Reds up 2-1 going to the bottom of the inning. Then the Cubs get their wax against Gabe White. 3-0 pitch to Gary Gaetti. Duh. Tie game. Then, one on Scott Service. You know it. Yanking and spanking. Final, Cubs 4, Reds 2. Cubs sweep the Reds. No biggie there. But Sosa at 56. Hey, that's big. Through the whole year, I have one great month, which was June, that I hit 20, and I feel like, uh, you know, never stop, you know, got to go out there, and I'm, I'm not satisfied right now. I want to go out there and try to finish strong, and uh, uh, go. Top three runners at the corners, Barry Larkin, the 300 hitter, grounds into the 6-4-3 double play, Cubs get out of trouble.
Bottom six, Archbishop of Chicago, Francis Cardinal George in the booth. So set the plate, divine intervention. Well, I, w I want you to do one thing, Cardinal. I want you to bless this team because we need it. <laughs> Sosa <laughs> hits a drive oh, to right oh, field. Oh. Back goes Tedagini to the wall. Gone! As soon as the Cardinal walks in here, Sammy hits his 56 home run. Sosa on and cracking. It's hindsight now, but he said later, before McGuire's night, Mark has the ability to come back tonight and hit two more. Steve Traxel was just blowing up. He got Jeffrey Hammonds, a 338 hitter. He got Brett Boone. He had five Ks. Bottom seven, the fans call for number 57, but Sosa swung in a 3-0 pitch. Flies out deep to left, but not enough. Still, he blew up. Sammy, two for four, hitting 312, 137 RBI this year. Top eight, Dimitri Young. Hums one to the gap in right center off Felix Heredia. Ed Tobinsey and Barry Larkin score 44th double of the year for Young, two on reds. Bottom eight, Gary Gaetti rocking the fat wood. With the Cubs down 2-1, his 14th homer of the season, a two-run shot. He said afterwards, it's incredible to be able to do what Sammy and McGuire are doing. Cobbs win 4-2. You know, there's a picture of Hack Wilson.